everyone, it's me, Bibs, and today I am going to talk about colors and a guide to palettes. I will cover the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors and the color schemes that come with it. I will tell you ways to create contrast and common pitfalls with color and how to avoid them. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you will feel comfortable enough to experiment with colors and carry the set of skills that I have told you, and perhaps even participate in November with me this year. All that being said, let's get started. Color, scientifically speaking, is radiation that bounces off on an object and is interpreted by the eye. Color is scientifically proven to cause certain feelings. Blue is calming and yellow alerts to danger. Here's a little bit of color vocabulary. Tone is the color plus gray. It's, it can also be referred to as saturation. Tint is the color plus white, so it becomes lighter. And shade is the color plus black, so it becomes darker. Primary colors cannot be created from other colors, which would be red, yellow, and blue. Secondary colors are made from mixing two primary colors. So red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, and red and blue make purple. And the tertiary colors are created when a primary and a secondary color are mixed. The colors are self-explanatory. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, and thus. Here on the color wheel, I have listed a handy little guide. P is for primary, so we can see the red and the yellow and the blue. The secondary is all here, and the tertiary is labeled by the T's. Now we can get into color schemes. A complementary color scheme are the two opposites on the color wheel. So red and green, or yellow and purple, blue and orange, those are the very common complementary color schemes. Split complementary is almost complementary, but instead of choosing the color opposite, it's the two colors on the left and on the right of that color. So instead of being red and green, it would be red and bluish green with yellow green, or green with reddish purple and red orange. Split complementary still has a lot of contrast, but it also adds a lot of harmony to it, since it's not as harsh. Double complementary and triangle color schemes, you should be very careful with them because the more colors you add to a piece, the easier it is to lose focus. A double complementary scheme is kind of self-explanatory. It tends to form a rectangle on the color wheel. So you would have maybe red, purple, orange, and blue on your piece, or you would have green, red, orange, and blue. A triangle color scheme is evenly spaced on the color wheel and often has a nice contrast to it. So we'd have red, blue and yellow, or purple, orange, and green. An analogous color scheme are the colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, usually just two or three. So red, red, orange, and orange, or yellow, orange, orange, and yellow, green. They have a lot of harmony and unity, but compared to a complementary color scheme, there is less contrast. Here are a few examples. You would have the blue violet, the reddish violet, and then the normal violet. Or you would have yellow green, yellow orange, and yellow. It's a very nice way to put all your colors together without just using the same color. Speaking of just using the same color, there are monochrome color schemes, where it's just one color and taking advantage of all its tones and tints and shades to make the piece. It is a good practice for tonal range, but if you're not careful, it could be really boring. So if you're using just all grays, if you use grays that are too close to each other, it might become very boring to look at. I have two examples here, one in red and one in blue. There is a difference in the tints and shades so that the eye travels around the piece without being bored or without getting lost. Speaking of the eye getting bored or lost, common pitfalls is when there's too much contrast too little contrast if it's muddy or if it's called eye strain when it happens. 
which is really common among beginner artists, when it's so bright that the viewer's eyes might hurt if they look at it because they go wham on the saturation and they put it as bright as can be, and then the, the colors get lost. Um, alternatively, while it's not eye strain, when there's too much contrast, the red is really red, the green is really green, and the blue is really blue. So where's the viewer supposed to look? You, you can't quite tell what I want you to look at here. Alternatively, when there's too little contrast, everything is really close in tone and there's nothing to focus on. Here, you have the color which looks very gray and odd. And then when you go to the tone, you can't even tell where one color ends and the other begins because they all look like one great blob. When it's muddy, there is a nice tonal range, but everything is really gray because it's the in-between of being gr proper gray and being a color that pops out. So it's just in this in-between zone where it all becomes muddy and all kind of blends together. So how do you avoid this? Well, you think about what color you want to pop out. So in this scenario, I would want the hair to come out more than anything. So I would think about that and I would make the blue brighter here and I would make the red softer so that the eye travels here. I would add the green for a bit of an accent and I would make sure that the tonal range is different enough that the eye travels directly to what I want them to look at. In this case, if the background is white, the eye will immediately focus on what's darker. So the face is light and the hairpins are in a bit of an in-between and then the hair is a lot darker. And that is how you can use saturation, tone, tints and shades and vary them to create contrast. So what you want to stand out, you make one thing and when you want to frame it, you might make another thing. So the light red is leads the eye towards the dark blue hair and vice versa. The viewer's eye will travel around the piece without getting lost or hurting their eyes like eye strain would. Hopefully, I've explained things well enough that you can go and experiment with color to make a unique piece. And there is no wrong way to do art. So just try to see what different color schemes you like and you want to experiment with. Maybe you like brighter colors. Maybe you like more gray colors. It's really up to you. I can't tell you how you want to do your art. And I know you can do it. You know, if you put your mind to it, you will find what you enjoy most. So, try Hivember with me this year. It's good practice for colors, and I'm confident that we'll both do a wonderful job together. Here's a final little question. Think of it as a bit of a pop quiz. Mm, what color scheme is this? You can either leave the answer as a comment or just quiz yourself. The answer will be in the video description. So, either way, I think you'll get it right. I have faith in you. All of that being said, I think we're done for today. I want you to work hard and to keep doing what you're doing. I know you can do it. Bye-bye.